Hello, and welcome to today's on-demand session at the ELI conference. Today, we're going to talk about uh, taking your Canvas course design to the next level using some of our tools from City Labs. My name is Mike Zacherson, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of City Labs. Let me start out by giving you a little bit of an overview about the company, and then we'll uh, spend most of our time today doing a demonstration. So City Labs provides tools for Canvas that help organizations scale their online course development and delivery practices. And as you can imagine, that's a pretty important topic uh, given today's uh, current circumstances. Our model is to take locally developed tools from organizations within the Canvas community. Uh, you know, many schools have created solutions to help with course design or check for accessibility or or create tools around canvas to help make their teams more efficient so we partner with these universities and uh, take their technology and put it into the cloud and we do this to make them more broadly available within the canvas community so we'll we'll partner with for example we, we partner with U utah state university and the university of central florida around several of our solutions and we will collaborate with them to bring their solutions into the cloud, set them up in uh, Amazon Web Services, and wrap them with training and support and the ongoing maintenance and, and so forth that you would expect from, uh, from a, a software vendor. And this is a way that we can SaaS share these solutions across the broader Canvas community. So far, uh, City Labs has been around since 2016. We started as a spin out from Utah State University's Center for Innovative Design and Instruction. We have a small team now uh, supporting our efforts. The team combined has nearly 90 years of experience in K-12 and higher ed and instructional design and, and Canvas. Uh, I specifically came from uh, Canvas before starting this company. I ran the partner program and through the number of uh, LTI integrations that were available uh, to within Canvas. I did that for three years and then saw an opportunity to partner with Utah State to, um, to pursue this model. Since 2016, we uh, have had the pleasure of working with 225 universities and, and schools around the country uh, to provide support for our collection of products. Our, Customer base looks a lot like the Canvas customer base, as you can imagine. We work with a lot of very large universities, a lot of R1 uh, kind of research universities, community colleges, um, a number of large school districts and smaller school districts. So uh, it kind of spans the whole spectrum as, as you can imagine the, the Canvas customer base does as well. So our tool set today consists of four tools. Uh, three of which came from Utah State University, and one uh, has been developed by University of Central Florida. Uh, the tools from Utah State include Design Plus, uh, Tidy Up, and Ready Go. And the tool uh, from University of Central Florida is their You Do It Accessibility Checker. So, Design Plus is an integrated course design tool set for Canvas that makes it real easy to rapidly build engaging courses without having to know a lot of HTML and CSS to, to make that happen. So think of it as a toolbox with a lot of tools in it to just help you make uh, really compelling content and also tools to help speed up the, the um, scaffolding process of your courses and so forth. And Design Plus is gonna be the um, topic of the, the demonstration today. So that's really the, the focus of today's presentation. You do it cloud is a course level accessibility checker for Canvas. So it'll scan the whole course, um, produce a report showing all the issues in all the, the Canvas pages in that course and provide some tools to help you fix those accessibility issues. So it's a really nice tool to um, you know, kind of get a, get a jump start on resolving accessibility issues inside your, your Canvas courses. Tidy Up is a utility to help you identify unused or duplicate files any pages that may be unpublished and gives you the ability to bulk delete uh, this content material in, in one step. So it really kind of streamlines the process of keep, keeping your file system inside Canvas um, up, to, up to date and, and um, you know, not letting it kind of get unwieldy, particularly as you copy courses from one term to the next and so forth. And then ReadyGo is a tool to help instructional design teams 
with the process that they go through to do the quality checks and kind of the, the pre-flight checks on a batch of courses before a new term starts. So if you are in, you know, in that position where you have hundreds of courses that you've got to prepare for an upcoming term and you need uh, to coordinate the work to go through those courses and verify that there's content in them and, and that it's set up the way, you know, that you expect and so forth. And this is a tool that can help really streamline that process and also provide some reporting so that uh, management can see how that process is coming before the upcoming term. So that's, that's a great tool of ours too. So like I said, uh, today's presentation is gonna focus on De Design Plus. And with me today, I've got Kenneth Larson from Utah State University, who is the inventor of Design Plus and the lead developer of, of the tools. And so he's gonna give us our demo and then we'll wrap it up after that. Kenneth, go ahead and take it away. All right, so uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, my name's Kenneth Larson. I actually still am a full-time employee at Utah State University and Design Plus is really a, a suite of tools that kind of developed as I've, uh, over the last seven years or so, worked with faculty and our instructional designers to help get our courses in Canvas. And I have a background in web development, so it kind of addresses some of those fun things that I really wanted to do with courses uh, and just kind of extends the, the flexibility and the functionality of Canvas. Now, as far as what C-Labs offers as design tools, it's, or Design Plus, it's actually a suite of three different tools. The main set of tools are available when you're working in the rich content editor. It gives you this lovely little pop-out sidebar where you can theme and templatize and style your content. Uh, these tools are available in pages, assignments, announcements, uh, your course syllabus, as well as that description portion for discussions and quizzes. And these tools are actually you added using the ability that Canvas gives to add CSS and JavaScript at an account level. Then there are two LTI tools. The multi-tool is a course level LTI tool to help you rapidly build your courses, creating templates, working with your module structure, adjusting dates, et cetera. This is an admin level tool. So it's only something that teachers and admins see. It's not something that your students see. And then the last one is a rich content editor LTI tool that really is there to just let you browse your computer, grab an image, crop it, resize it, uh, and upload that. Um, and have it embedded where it's working inside the rich content editor. So these are the three tools and I'll show you how they work hand in hand to help you build out your courses. But before we do that, I wanna give you an idea of a lot of the different things that you can do with the tools. So this is an example page, has lots of different things on it. The tools do come with the ability to choose a variety of different themes. And all I'm really doing is changing the style of this page. So the structure remains the same, and this allows you to have some fun with the look and feel of your content while still keeping a consistent user experience. And as we set up for institutions, we also will adjust the color palette so that it matches your institutional branding. But then there's just a wide variety of different things you can do. One of the things that the tools allow you to do is, is to choose like kind of these main pieces. So you've got a nice stylized heading area, You've got uh, a you know, uh, banner image that you can add in, some pieces that kind of work well with the front page, uh, or you could just use the stylized heading for just like a normal basic page. You can also add what we call content blocks, which are really these chunks to just you know, easily make available this structure for your content. And you can actually define template blocks at the institution level. And the tools that you can use in the rich content editor allow you to do a lot. Uh, and we don't want to overwhelm people. So we actually break it down into comfort levels. So at the basic level, you're working with uh, choosing themes and adding content blocks. You can style images, uh, have fun with your links, turning them into buttons. You can style your tables, make tables that are sortable alphanumerically, work with ordered and unordered lists, style and adjust embedded content that comes in, into iframes, things like videos or external LTI tool content. You can choose from over 2000 icons to add these little decorative pieces along the way. Uh, what we consider more the intermediate level, you can start to work with things like adding in borders and working with margins and padding and colors and alerts and emphasis and uh, dynamic panel widgets, things like tabs and accordions uh, and a variation we call expanders where you can operate multiple panels at a time. We've got a variety of progress bars you can add in. Uh, the ability to add in information about teachers and TAs. At the advanced level, there's a lot of tools for people like me who are uh, slightly lacking in sanity and actually enjoy things like working with HTML and CSS. 
but there's also the ability to create your own border styles and save those and you can create pop-up content and uh, we have these um, ungraded multiple choice questions called quick checks that are just a quick formative assessment to provide instant feedback to students based on how they answer questions and if any of those options are not enough fun for you we also have what we call html snippets which are really just pre-configured chunks of content that you can add in at the cursor position things like call outs we've got some column layout options uh, we've got some horizontal dividers images with captions in a variety of styles and then at the institution level you can define your own html snippets so if you find things that are lacking that you want to be able to add in you can build those and make those available through the tools as well now when it comes to actually working with the tools what ends up happening is up here in the top right we get this little launch design tools button that we can click and open up to access these different tools and at the top here, we have some shortcuts to tools. This will kind of change depending on your, where you're working to give you a, a direct and easy way to get to some of the tools. We have the ability to adjust the view in the rich content editor. So these tools will bring in all the styling and show it there, but they also let you, uh, this blocks view lets you see a little bit below the surface. If we want more of an idea of what it's gonna look like when saved, we can change over to the browser view. Uh, Canvas also gives the ability to add CSS and JavaScript to the mobile app, so we can change over to the app view if we want more of an idea of how this content's gonna flow on, say, like a typical smartphone. Uh, or we can see it with no styling. So Canvas gives you that ability to make content available offline where students can download it, but that doesn't bring in the CSS and JavaScript, so you can also see it without that information. But the majority of the tools are housed in this area, and they've been broken down by activity type. So up here at the top, we have adding content, working with our content blocks, pulling in existing content, etc. In the customize the style section here at the basic level, this is where you work with images, links, tables, and lists. So if I select an image in the rich content editor, I get the image tools. If I'm working in a link or a list or a table, it's just going to dynamically change there. We also have some built-in accessibility pieces to help make sure the content you're creating meets accessibility guidelines. So this heading outline will let you quickly come in and see if you've skipped heading levels and adjust your heading levels as needed. The image check will let you quickly go through and update your alternative text or flag images or, as decorative. Uh, this link check pulls all your links out of context so you can make sure that they make sense so that if you see something like link or this link or click here or those things that can be really frustrating to screen reader users and uh, for that matter, anybody who's trying to find a resource and ha comes across a whole bunch of click here. There are things like that. And there's accessibility is something we've tried to just build in in general throughout the tools. So for example, when we're working with tables, I'm sure many of you have seen people that just come through and bold the text thinking that that makes a table uh, heading. But even the process of coming in here and setting the properties can be very tedious. So we can come over and we can say we need a heading row and that takes care of making that appropriate table heading structure. We can add some styling, you know, we can, uh, you know, condense the text size, we can make it sortable alphanumerically, we can add footers, we can add the first row as columns, just a lot of things to not only make the content more accessible, but also just in general more usable by everyone. Okay, so now that you have kind of an idea of, of how this is set up, I, you know, we can go through and, and show you what it looks like to actually build out a course using these tools. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a blank canvas course here and uh, we're going to start by coming to the settings and we're going to turn on the multi tool. So we're going to come to the navigation tab. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up and we'll go ahead and save that multi tool. Now the LTI tools do use the canvas API on your behalf. So when you first come in, they'll ask you to authorize them, but we can just kind of work through here right from the top. So I'm going to start up here in the template builder. And one of the first things you'll see here is the ability to create a front page. So Canvas gives you that uh, a variety of options that you can have for that landing area of a course. But if you're like us and you'd like to use a page there, you'll know it takes about seven steps to actually configure that. So this create a front page is gonna create a page called home, publish it, mark it as the front page. If I want my home link to be that, I can go ahead and set that up as well. So, and I could go directly to edit this, but I'm gonna hold off because uh, hopefully we'll have enough time to show you a couple of fun things I like to do with the front page. But the main thing that you think about when you're in this template builder is you wanna think about the pieces that are gonna make up your course. So let's say in each of my modules, I wanna have an overview page and maybe we're gonna have some lab assignments and maybe we've got some group discussions and some end of unit quizzes. This is really just creating a shell for each of these different types of content 
inside of the course. Uh, and then I can go ahead and select one of these to start actually flushing this out as a template. So when I first open up the design tools sidebar here and I'm working with new content, uh, there are a couple of different things that I can do with that. So I'm gonna go ahead here and we could pull in existing content. So if I have a page that I've previously created in this course, or if I want to pull in an institutionally defined template page, I can come pick those from this area, or I can just start from scratch by choosing a theme. So each of those different themes are available here. You can hover over to get an idea of what they look like. Go ahead and pick the one you want. Because this is a template, I'm not gonna worry about this heading area, but I do wanna think about what other structural things I wanna put in here. And as we talked about content blocks, and I mentioned the things that you can do at the institution level, you can create these template blocks. Well, that's what each of these links represent. So I'm gonna throw in an introduction, some objectives, some readings, some lectures. We'll add in some information about assignments. Maybe I want to talk about some uh, current events. So we can go ahead and add our own custom blocks as well. We can drag and drop and rearrange these items. Maybe I want to go ahead and add an icon to this current event. So there's lots of fun things we can do to customize the look and feel. And the idea here is to build as much of the structure as you can so that you have to repeat yourself as little as possible when it comes time to actually building out the content of your course. And because these tools just are helping you write content in Canvas, you can use any of the tools you're already familiar with. These work with both the uh, current rich content editor as well as the new rich content editor. Uh, and you can go through and flush that out. When you're done, you go ahead and save it. And then we can come in uh, and you know, we'd go ahead and close that, return to the multi-tool and continue working on our different templates. Now, typically you're focusing on the rich content editor, but you can also set a lot of the other basic settings. Like uh, if I wanted my labs to be in a lab assignment group, I could put the template in there. If I wanted my discussions to be threaded or students need to post before they see other students posting, you can set a lot of those basic settings. Two things I haven't reverse engineered are quiz question banks and grading rubrics. Uh, those are still the same experience that they've always been in Canvas. Uh, hopefully one day we'll get those added as well. But you go through and you flush out your templates. And once you've got those all built out, the next step is to move on to the module builder. And here we're gonna step back and take a look at what a typical module is going to look like. So let's say I wanna break up this course by units and we're gonna go ahead and create five units. And let's say that in each of these units, I wanna have my overview page that's gonna be based off that overview template that we created. But I can throw in assignments, discussions, quizzes, the little text headers that are available in Canvas. You can rearrange these things, indent these things, remove things. Let's say that this assignment's gonna be our lab, so we'll base that off our lab template, and I want it submitted online, and typically they're gonna be 150 points a piece. You're really just flushing out this basic pattern for what a module's going to look like. And once you've got that pattern set up, you go ahead and generate the module list, which duplicates that pattern for however many modules you wanna create. And then we just go through and fill out this outline. So let's say unit one is our introduction and maybe we're not gonna have a quiz in this unit. And maybe unit two is getting started and unit three is halfway there and unit four is almost finished and unit five is our conclusion. So you're just going through and flushing out this pattern, adding additional items, titling things, uh, whatever you need to do. You do have the ability to save your progress so you can work on this outline over a couple of days if you need to. And then once you're ready, you go ahead and add the modules to the course. And this uses the Canvas API in the background to take and build out that structure. So when I started working here at Utah State, this process of building a shell uh, that we'd hand off to faculty to start putting in their content would take four hours to two days. Uh, now, when our instructional designers sit down and meet with faculty for their half hour to hour consultation, they actually walk out of that meeting with a fully built out course shell that they can immediately go back to their office and start adding in that content. And if we take a look at like our overview page here that was based off that template we created, uh, you can see that part of why I told you not to worry about uh, adjusting that heading is when you use the module builder, it puts in what unit you're in and what number and how you've titled that content. And so now I would just go ahead and edit this page and put in the content that's going to be unique to this course. And you'd work your way through your assignments, discussions, quizzes, et cetera, and actually start to fill in that content. Okay, so you go through, you build that out, you put in your content. Uh, at any point in time, you can return to the multi-tool and we can add to existing modules, we can rearrange things, we can create more modules. The next tool in here though is actually one of our fa faculty's favorites. This is the due date modifier. 
This tool will actually pull in all of your assignments, discussions, and quizzes into one page so that we can go through and choose dates, set times, uh, and that give you one area that you can do that. And you can do that when you first build a course, but this really comes in handy the next time you teach that course. Because Canvas gives you that ability to roll the dates forward, but holidays and breaks seem to fall at different times every single time you teach a course. So you can come in here and fine tune that. You can also do things like setting blackout days. So you can go through your calendar and mark all the holidays so that they're blacked out on the, when you're trying to pick dates and times. You can set default times so that when you actually pick a, time, a date, it'll set whatever appropriate time you set in there. And then we can even bulk update things. So you can pick multiple assignments and set them all to the same due date. Or if I've you know, taught last time and I had everything due at 6 p.m. and I want to move it to 11.59 p.m. because students all thought that's what time it was due anyway, I could select all of my assignments and move all of those times at once uh, rather than having to go through each individually. And there's a similar tool for working with announcements as well. So lots of fun things we can do in there. If we take a look at that home page that we created and we open up the tools in here, uh, if we take a look at choosing a theme, the themes in here uh, are now specific to a front page. So in addition to just a stylized heading, we've got that banner image, we've got some navigation images or some navigation items. There's also some information below it to let you know the recommended or in some cases the required image ratio for that theme. So you can go ahead and pick the theme that you want. Uh, we can customize stuff in the rich content editor or we've also built things in along the way. So let's say that this is gonna be City Labs and welcome to design plus, and maybe I want a subtitle, and maybe I want a description, or maybe I don't want these pieces. So just some quick and easy ways to customize things. When it comes to the banner images, you can set the default at the institution level. You can also make additional images available that people can pick and choose from. Uh, however, most of the people I work with, you want that image to reflect the subject being taught or the personality of the instructor. So we can go ahead and select that image, open up our, our third tool, the upload embed image tool, which would allow you to come in and browse your computer, grab an image. We can choose that recommended or required image ratio, pick the portion of this image that we'd like to use, go ahead and crop and resize it, and then I can upload and embed it. So that sends a request to Canvas to add that image to my course files. When it hears back, it'll go ahead and insert it there. We can work with our navigation, et cetera. And all of this that we've done so far has just been part of the basic level of the tools. If we come up into our settings, there's some additional things we can do. So we have all of these additional tools that we can turn on. And we can turn them on one at a time, or we can go to like the intermediate level, which now if we take a look at our customize the style section, in addition to working with our images, links, tables, and lists, we can start playing with colors and spacing and highlights. We've gained an add advanced elements section where we can add in accordions and progress bars. If we go to the advanced level, we get a few new pieces here. We get a few new pieces in the customize the style section. One of my favorites is an advanced HTML editor that lets you just select an element and get right to its HTML instead of having to dig through all of the insanity that is the entire HTML of your page. And so lots of fun things we can do there. One thing you'll learn about me fairly quickly is I love to play with color. So we also have built-in tools along the way to help you set colors. Uh, and you'll see we can come in, we can pick a background color, change our text color. But then this column is also going to let us know if the colors that we've selected meet the WCAG 2.0 accessibility rating for sufficient color contrast. And actually, if you watch this rating, you'll notice that if I go darker, now I've got a AAA rating for both, but no matter where I select, I'm getting a passing accessibility rating because it will actually look at that color and determine whether black text or white text gives the best uh, contrast. So lots of fun things you can have without having to worry about uh, the accessibility on the back end. Uh, you can also, lots of fun things that I won't get into. If you want to learn more, uh, we can do a, schedule a longer demo with you because there's lots of fun things. There's a, a module list that you can add to the front page that will dynamically pull in uh, the module information for the course uh, and kind of dynamically update that so students have a quick way to get to things. Uh, yeah, lots, lots of fun. Uh, one other thing when, that I do want to cover real quick, let's take a look at the syllabus. So the tools in the syllabus are pretty much the same as what's available in other areas, but there are a few additions and a few modifications. So we could still come choose a theme. We can still come add content blocks, but at the institution level, you build these blocks unique to the syllabus. So I could throw in a course description, course objectives, Canvas support information. You can add grading schemes if that's set in Canvas. If it's not, there's an option to walk you through and show you how to set that up. 
But the other piece I want to show you that's unique to the syllabus is the ability to add institutional policies. So I'm going to add this example policies block and just think of this as all that legally stuff. You're cheating, sexual harassment, withdrawal policies, disability statements, all that stuff that you want everybody to have in their syllabus, but nobody can ever remember where they're supposed to find it or they have no way of knowing when it's changed. You can add these into the syllabus. They are locked so that they're not edited in the syllabus. But what happens is anytime you come in and you edit the syllabus, the tools are going to go out, find where that policy is set at the institution level, grab the current state of it, and replace what's in the syllabus with that updated policy. So if you keep them up to date at the institution level, they stay up to date uh, at the course level. And all of the different things that you actually customize uh, inside of the tools for your institution are done in a Canvas course. So you have different pages. So the little template blocks that we pulled in when we built our, uh, you know, that uh, overview page, any template content block you build in this page becomes available for other people to pull in as templates. You can build uh, you know, syllabus blocks, the policies we pulled in, template pages, template syllabi, setting your color palette. There's a kind of a, a clipboard objectives tool, creating your own HTML snippets, making additional banner images available, even going in and turning off the different themes. All of this just happens inside a Canvas course. The one last piece I want to show you before I hand it over to Christy is working with existing content. So all the content you've put the blood, sweat, and tears already into developing but may just kind of have that very vanilla look that's a uh, default to Canvas, we can come in and we can give this content a facelift. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come into this page that came from a gamifications course available through Canvas Commons. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a theme. It's already pulled in that title area, the, you know, the title of the page, but maybe I want this to be part of you know, chapter three. And we've got our design tools wrapper up here. This is where the theming takes place we've got all this other content down below. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some content blocks. But down at the bottom of this, we have this little selection to block button. So I can use my cursor to highlight what I would like to turn into a content block, use that selection to block to move that up in there, and then just kind of shift click my way down through this content, turning each of these pieces into their own content blocks. Uh, and so uh, as you do this, you can also end up with some little orphaned pieces that we can remove uh, to clean that up. But now we've got that alternating light gray and white that's part of this particular theme. We've got controls over here for our blocks. So let's add a little folder icon in here. And this is a game design course. So let's look for some game related icons. And so you can really just start to quickly go through and customize your content. If we want to have fun with the images as well, I can go ahead and select the image, come into our styling tools, adjust the alt text if I need, float that to the left, give it a nice round border style, take this guy, float him to the right with a square border style. And so you can take and use these different tools along the way, and we can quickly go through and have some fun with that. And we've taken something that was previously very vanilla HTML, and now we have something with a much more polished look and feel that might match what we want to create in the future. Whew, okay, so if that was hopefully enough of a whirlwind for you. Thank you, Kenneth, for a great overview. We appreciate that. So with that um, overview of Design Plus, if you have any questions about it or any of our other tools, please reach out to us. You can uh, schedule a demo with us or we're happy to set up a Sandbox account for you where you can try out the tools in uh, in a sandbox environment, uh, or if you just have specific questions, please uh, reach out and, and send those to us. So hit our website, citylabs.com, and we're happy to uh, work with you there. So with that, thank you for your time. We know your time's valuable, particularly during this time, and uh, we uh, appreciate your attendance and wish you all the best. Thanks. <laughs>